In the last video, we discussed how human mesenchymal stem cells can inhibit the most model of multiple sclerosis, an autoimmune disease where the immune system is attacking parts of the myelin. Today, we're going to talk about another autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and about a recent paper, which is a very excellent paper, that discusses how human fat-derived mesenchymal stem cells can inhibit the mouse model of rheumatoid arthritis. So how do you give a mouse rheumatoid arthritis? Well, it's kind of similar to how you give the mouse multiple sclerosis. You take a component of the target tissue. So in multiple sclerosis, you take myelin, and components of the myelin sheath, and you immunize the mouse so that the immune response, immune system, starts attacking where you vaccinate it and then starts attacking the myelin in the, in the CNS. In the mouse model of rheumatoid arthritis, you take collagen 2, which is a protein found in the joints, and you immunize the mouse with it. And then the mouse makes an immune response against it, and then it starts attacking the joints. And you get a disease which you measure by a clinical severity score. Um, remember how in the multiple sclerosis model there was a EAE score? Well, this one is a similar type of scoring system, instead, but instead of looking at disability of the, um, of the central nervous system, you look for inflammation and swelling of the paws and of the joints in the mouse. So, what the investigators did is they injected mice with 1 million intravenously, 1 million human fat-derived mesenchymal stem cells, as you can, and for five days they did the injection, once a day. And as you can see in this figure, in the first figure, uh, after on the y-axis is the severity score, and the x-axis is time, the last point is day 50, and as you can see, the controls had an increase in disease. The mice that received the cells, the stem cells, on day 30, they had a slight decrease in disease. If the stem cells were given on day 24, there was even more inhibition of disease. On day 22, there was appeared almost no disease. So, is this an effect that is specific to the human stem cells being put into the mouse? Or can you achieve this effect by giving other types of human stem cells in the mouse? I mean human cells, besides stem cells. So the investigators, um, in this figure, they, in, they in, induce this arthritis in the mouse and they try to inhibit it with the um, human fibroblasts, which as you can see there was no inhibition. Uh, with human myoblasts, which again did not inhibit the disease, with dead uh, fat-derived mesenchymal cells, which as you can see did not inhibit the disease, but when the human fat stem cells where the fat-derived mesenchymals were injected, there was disease inhibition. Now, when you look in the joints of the mice who have been, um, and whose disease has been inhibited, you can see a decrease in the inflammatory cytokines, as you can see in this figure here, the white bars are the mice that have been treated, the black bars are controlled, so there's a decrease in things such as TNF and IL-6 and, and, and interferon gamma. Also, the decreased inflammation is seen at the level of the serum. When you take serum from the mice, you can see here a decreased um, inter, uh, TNF alpha and a decreased interleukin 1 in the mice that have been treated with the stem cells. When you look at the T cells, and you take the T cells out from the mouse of the mice that have been immunized, and you activate them again in vitro with the same collagen tool that you use to induce the disease, you can see here the T cells make less inflammatory cytokines upon re-stimulation. Now, here is where the really interesting thing happens. When they looked at the mice after treatment with the mesenchymal stem cells, with the fat stem cells, they saw an increased level of FOXP3 positive, CD4 positive, CD25 positive cells. What does this mean? These are a type of cell in the immune system that seems to dampen inflammation. It seems to be, they call them T-regulatory cells. And T-regulatory cells, they are active in people when they have remission of autoimmune disease. It seems to be the body's own way of protecting itself from autoimmunity. So as you can see in this figure, there's more T-regulatory cells in the joints of the, I mean, in the lymph nodes, in the draining lymph nodes, uh, and uh, locally, of the mice that have been treated with the mesenchymal stem cells. But when you look at the draining lymph nodes and at the joints of the 
and you look for normal T cells, not the special uh, T regulatory cells, but but uh, the other types of T cells you can see that are not T regulatory that don't have FOXP3. Those ones, their infiltration is in the, the joint and in the um, in the lymph node is much less. So it seems to be that these mesenchymal stem cells are inducing somehow the generation of T regulatory cells. Now, are these T regulatory cells functional or not? And that seems to be a really interesting question. So what they did is they took the mice that have been treated with mesenchymal stem cells and extracted the CD4 cells from the mice. They took these CD4 cells because the T regulatory component is in the CD4 fraction. So you take the CD4 cells from mice that have been treated with the fat cells and that have had um, induced uh, rheumatoid arthritis like disease and you transfer them into mice that have not received the mesenchymal cells but just received the um, induction of arthritis and these transfer T cells. When you transfer T cells, as you can see in the figure, when you transfer the T cells from mice that have not been given fat stem cells, T cell, those T cells don't do anything to the, to the disease in the second set of mice. When you transfer the CD4 T cells from mice that have been treated with mesenchymal stem cells, those T cells, those CD4 cells, inhibit the disease in the mouse after it's been transferred. Now, if you deplete the CD25 component of the transferred T cells from the mesenchymal stem cell treated mice, then you do not, you cannot transfer protection. So what this data in general seems to be saying, this paper, why I was very excited when I read it, is because it says a couple of really important points. Number one, you can use fat stem cells from human into the mouse and protect from disease. Number two, the effect is specific to the stem cells. Not other human cells can do this. Number three, the fat stem cells seem to be inhibiting inflammation locally in the joint systemically in the T-cell and systemically in the serum. And number four, they're inducing T-regulatory cells which actually seem to have function. So why this is interesting obviously is because not just the possibility of being able to use fat stem cells, but if the fat stem cells stimulate T-regulatory cells and T-regulatory cells are part of the body's own way to inhibit inflammation, the possibilities come up of using mesenchymal cells with other types of immune modulatory approaches in order to amplify immune response, tolerogenic immune responses. So, for example, tolerogenic immune responses, uh, if you eat antigen, there are studies where they treated patients with collagen 2, they gave them collagen 2 to eat, and there was some mild inhibition of the arthritis but we know there were T regulatory cells made. Now, conceptually, one could take mesenchymal stem cells and use it together with such things as oral tolerance approach to amplify this. So this is why I got very excited from reading this paper. Thank you very much.